Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. Online marketing has become increasingly important as time goes on. In fact, many brick-and-mortar businesses are not doing very well because of online marketing by other firms who have a better grasp of how it works. On the line today and tomorrow is a guest to talk about that type of online marketing in today's world. My name is John Kelly. I'm the CEO of ZenReach. ZenReach is the walkthrough company. We provide uh, the ability to drive in-store traffic to merchants um, throughout the country. How long has Zen t- um, has ZenReach been in business then? ZenReach has been in business just about eight years. Okay, and could you tell me what the initial motivation for creating this company and providing the range of services that it currently offers to the industry then? Yeah, the the initial vision was to bridge the online and the offline world. If you look at uh, the growth of the online world, it's been tremendous and fantastic, growing 14 15% year over year, uh, yet it has still remained less than 15% of all of commerce. And so the vision was, can we bring the efficiency and transparency of the online world to the offline world? And that would really make a big difference in the offline world. I would expect so, since there are so many firms in different industries that are going through some very difficult times. In some cases, firms that have been around for over 100 years have not changed or evolved and have ended up going out of business, or close to it at least, because they don't have the expertise or the, or the smarts to, to function in the world as it exists now rather than the one they were used to functioning in. And I, it sounds to me like, uh, like your firm's taking advantage of the need for services like yours to, um, to help where it needs to be done. That's right. Uh, yeah, we're, we're bringing basically new technology uh, to the market to enable uh, local merchants, and this can be even small merchants, to uh, have the efficiencies that the big merchants already have, like, uh, like Amazon and Best Buy and others. Uh, we're making a lot of that technology available to the smaller guys as well to put them on par. You know, uh, give the best practices to the small guys as well. I suppose many listeners are used to dealing with with merchants like Amazon and may or may not be cognizant of the fact that Amazon in many ways competes with the third party um, merchants that that use it to sell product. Are you suggesting that you could help a firm develop the kind of rapport that, that they would like to have without having to go to someone like an Amazon, for instance, not to pick on them unnecessarily, but they are the, the best known example at the current time, and they do seem to have the ability to have it both ways, both to serve themselves at the same time they're serving other businesses, but not too well. Uh, we're, we're not competing with Amazon. Amazon's a great company that does a great job. What we're trying to provide is the ability for merchants to understand digital marketing and outreach to their consumers better because we're able to show them not just the audiences and the messages that resonate with the consumers in the online world, but also show that it drives traffic to their stores, to their physical stores. So it's a very different value proposition from Amazon, from others. It's, uh, it's essentially a new technology uh, that we're bringing to the market. What would bring a firm to ZenReach, and what kind of questions might they come with, perhaps not fully understanding what they're asking, but knowing that they need to do something to keep moving along in the world and to function as efficiently and as effectively as they can, and they have a sense that you know something they don't know? Yeah, so let's take it at the very basic level. Uh, let's say I own a coffee shop or a restaurant, uh, John's Coffee Shop, and I, and I uh, am doing well, uh, but I want more traffic, especially nowadays, especially in these difficult times. Uh, well, what are the channels I can pursue to get more traffic? Traditionally, that might have been things like news flyers or mailers or perhaps a billboard out front or um, maybe if you got really sophisticated, you tried some Google AdWords or you put up a Facebook page. Um, under all of those examples, it's really hard to know whether somebody saw what you did and actually came into my coffee shop because of it. Uh, what we're providing is the ability to have that transparency. We'll provide a digital messaging for John's Coffee Shop. We'll, we'll tell you how many people saw it, and we'll tell you how many people actually walked in. 
And the way we are able to make that available is by leveraging the in-store Wi-Fi. And we take we put a software layer on top of that in-store Wi-Fi that creates a guest experience. Uh, and then we also use it as a sensor. So we know when the consumer has seen one of the messages and we know when they've walked back in. And I could talk about the details of how that works, but that's essentially the gist. Okay, I went through journalism school in the 1970s as part of the Part of the program at Iowa State University back then was advertising, and I used yep. to hear I used to hear professors and fr- and uh, student friends of mine in in the in the in the in that program talk about impressions and how many million eyes could look at a publication, for instance, and an estimate of how many actually had based upon some other factors such as how product moved and things like that. Um, uh, are you dealing with with what might be considered a 21st century? Example or instance of that sort of thing only brought up brought up to date with the technology that you have available to to work with then? Yeah, yeah, you could say that absolutely. So if you were advertising in the newspaper in the 1970s, they would give you uh, something called impression counts, right? The number of people that uh, have seen the newspaper. Now you kind of take that and you say, all right, well, if you've got a hundred thousand readers of your newspaper, maybe you assume that the hundred thousand people read it. Uh, and 100,000 people have seen your advertisement. The truth of the matter is, you know, maybe they have 100,000 readers, but maybe not all of them read the newspaper every day. And if they read the newspaper every day, maybe they haven't seen every single page of it. So you have to kind of discount that a little bit, Mm, right? Yeah. Uh, In the online world, we we actually uh, don't really have that much discounting. We can get pretty good at determining whether somebody has, quote, seen an advertisement or not. Uh, so there, there might be a slight discount associated with it, but not, not to the same extent that exists in the offline world. So if you know somebody's seen it, then the next kind of hurdle is, did it actually drive somebody into the business? And there's a lot of uh, inferences that can be made online to determine whether somebody has, quote, uh, uh, gone into your, one of your locations. Uh, one of them is, did they click on the ad? Did they click on the ad and they go to a viewfinder? Like, hey, I want, I'm interested in John's Coffee Shop. I click on it. Where's my location? That might be a good inference that, uh, that uh, I'm interested in going, but it's not a guarantee, right? Right. Um, there are other inferences that you can uh, glean. If you get really, really sophisticated, you look at point of sale and things like this, but the, the truth of the matter is you're only getting close you're not getting that one-to-one relationship between the, the person who's seen an ad and their actual presence in your location. That's where we come in. That's what we do. We can bridge that gap and tell you that John saw the ad on Thursday afternoon and he walked in for his cup of coffee Friday morning. Okay. Uh, has, has your ability to put your finger on that kind of detail changed significantly, let's say, within the last 10 years or so. The reason I ask is because I have a car, a Subaru Outback. I bought, it, it's a 2008 model. I bought it when it was three years old and had been traded in by the first owner. And when I mentioned to the owner of the dealership in Connecticut that I had seen an, an ad of his pop up or appear in my um, Yahoo email, account, he appeared a little bit surprised that I would have come into his dealership as a result of having seen something like that. But I don't really know whether someone else at his dealership was responsible for advertising and therefore would be the initial person who would be aware of that kind of information or, or whether that was a shot in the dark on the part of the dealership at the time, but they hadn't really recognized very often that people actually saw them unless a customer like me said so. And, and when, when did you make this purchase? Eight years ago? Uh, nine years ago, yeah. My guest is John Kelly from uh, Zen Reach Online Marketing. We'll hear more about what he does and what his firm encourages businesses to do in the 21st century. For further information, call us at 860-346-1049. That's 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of this station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal, public affairs from WIHS Middletown.